I think it's just lack of governance. I mean, if you look at NTOs and, and you know, this flawed thinking that the more and more visitors that we have is going to help our economy, you know, realistically, maybe so 95%. Bottom line figures. Bottom line figures, mm. but actually not a big chunk of that revenue actually doesn't stay in the local economy. As you know, it might be going to foreign owned and operated businesses. It goes into a few limited hands who really profit from Is there an example that, that, that you would like to share? I think if you look at where the revenues from all the temple um, temple entrance fees go to in Siem Reap, you'd be very surprised about where that goes. I don't know anything about yes. that. Please explain. So it does go. It does go to um, certain individuals or certain organizations that are affiliated um, with the government um, or, or the ruling party of the day um, that really collects a lot of that revenue. It really doesn't go back to the, to the local communities. Um, so when, when you have that, um, the very people that it's meant to benefit are not benefiting. I think where we have seen um, the lack of governance um, really destroy a destination is Boracay in the Philippines. Oh, yes. So you could see that, you know, the president went there and decided to shut down a destination for six months because he said it was a, a cesspool. And so it was really around kicking out all those illegal operators, knocking down illegal infrastructure um, and bringing strong governance back. But to make that happen, you know, Philippines had to invest a great deal of money to rehabilitate that destination because they li literally shut it down for more than six months. Um, and it really required collaboration of multiple government agencies um, and private sector to be able to to restore, you know, the marine and the coastal ecosystem, to be able to create new infrastructure, proper waste management systems and processes, and then to police that. Um, but, you know, as a result, Boracay has come back, certainly with less people, a much lower carrying capacity than it used to have, but it's better yield for the operators that are in, in that destination. How, how did it happen in the first place? How did Boracay become so... Uh, overcrowded. It was just It's promoted. a small place, for God's sake. Yeah, it was a small place, but, you know, it was very well marketed. And there was literally um, a lot of unauthorized development, you know, mm. so people were, were getting... Um, were able to get around the, the building codes and, and the regulations by perhaps paying incentives um, to be able to get their structures. And, and so it was just very, very well marketed. Um, and it just became known, I guess, as this great seaside um, coastal resort. And it was, yeah. So it, you're saying it, that more and more people went there? More and more people went there, which then attracted more and more foreign operators who were then taking groups there. And then they were starting hotels and, and all sorts of restaurants and and not having proper proper um, yeah, waste management or, you know, sewage was being pumped directly into the ocean. So it was just people turning a blind eye because they were paid to turn away a blind eye, to turn a blind eye, you know. And it wasn't until, I guess, Duterte went there and visited the destination, like he grew up there, you know, and looked at it and just went, this is disgusting. We're going to shut it down, you know. But that took, you know, they, they poured billions of pesos into new infrastructure and and not to mention um, that that whole destination had no revenue for, for a long time. Yes, of course. Um, so. However, you know, it, it, the silver lining, I guess, is that, you know, Philippines now understand that, well, they, they spend a lot of money to rebrand that destination as a sustainable destination. I think they can feel that this is a model that they can create a competitive advantage in in a very crowded, you know, ASEAN um, market. So, and they're planning to do that with more destinations in the in the Philippines um, and to really be able to put Philippines up as a sustainable, um, a sustainable country, a sustainable destination for travelers.